Welcome to the solutions for the AP Atomic and Nuclear Physics Problem Set numbers 1, 2, and 5. Let's go ahead and jump right in and get started with number 1 here, highlighting important information as we go. When light of wavelength, 350 nanometers, so that's lambda, falls on a potassium surface, electrons have a maximum kinetic energy of 1.31 electron volts, so that would be K max, are emitted. A, find the work function, that's phi, the threshold frequency, that's FO, and the threshold wavelength, which is lambda O. All right, starting off with an A here, we go to the reference table and find our equation, our photoelectric equation, that relates the maximum kinetic energy, the incident energy, and the work function. And we see that it says K max equals HF minus phi. Well, we were given, in this case, the wavelength of the incident light, not the frequency. So a nice little shortcut to keep in mind for later use is to remember that these this is light which of course travels the speed of light so deriving the frequency from our wave equation here we're reminded that f equals c over lambda so a nice shortcut to often use and consider instead of having to do two steps is to say instead of hf hc over lambda minus phi Okay, so an alternate form of the photoelectric equation that's often useful to us there. All right, they gave us the maximum kinetic energy as 1.31 electron volts. Because of that, we want to use the electron volt second form of Planck's constant. And that, of course, is 4.14 times 10 to the negative 15 that we find on the reference table as well in the constants page. Speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8th. And our incident wavelength of 350 in nanometers, so that's times 10 to the negative 9. We're looking for the work function here, so we're going to solve that for phi. And doing the calculation, pause the video if you need a moment to do that, we find phi to be 2.24 electron volts. Now we're going to use this information to do the rest of the problem, B and C. On B, our work function, phi, equals HFO. So we go ahead and substitute 2.24 equals 4.14 times 10 to the negative 15. Again, using the electron volt second form there. And FO is our threshold frequency. Solve for FO. Again, pause if you need a moment. And we get 5.41 times 10 to the 14th hertz. Okay. And then for the threshold wavelength, again, this is light. So we make the connection C equals F lambda. But we're going to make this threshold frequency and threshold wavelength specific. 3 times 10 to the 8th equals our answer from B, 5.41 times 10 to the 14th. And solve for the threshold wavelength, which when we calculate, we get 5.55 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. All right, so that's our answer and our solution to number one. The number two, it says when a certain metal is illuminated with light of frequency 3 times 10 to the 15th hertz, All right, so there's our F value. Note that that is not necessarily the threshold frequency there. That's the incident frequency of the light. A stopping potential 
of 7 volts, that's V, is required to stop the most energetic ejected electrons. What is the work function phi of this metal? Well, once again, we have incident frequency. Kind of interesting, they gave us stopping potential here and they're looking for work function. The key to this problem is how does the incident frequency and the work function relate to each other? And once again, it relates by K max equals uh, HF minus phi, our photoelectric equation. But the link here is the stopping potential. Uh, we'll go back to our lesson on how is maximum kinetic energy uh, determined in the photoelectric experiment. And you may remember the maximum kinetic energy is a work energy theorem derivation where the stopping potential times the charge, V times Q, is used to calculate the maximum kinetic energy. So a really neat uh, concept here is to combine both into one calculation equals HF minus phi. Okay. The easiest way to do to proceed with this question is to take the electron volt second root. So we have a stopping potential of 7 volts. If we let our Q value be just one elementary charge, in this case one electron, we get 7 EV for our maximum kinetic energy. Well, if we're going to do that, we also need to use the electron volt second of Planck's constant, so 4.14 times 10 to the negative 15 times the frequency of the incident light, which was 3 times 10 to the 15th. And our work function is what we're looking for there, so again, we're going to solve for phi. We go ahead and perform the calculation. Pause if you need a moment. And we would get our answer here. We get 5.42 electron volts. If you did this in joules, you would substitute 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs for your Q value. You would then use the 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule second form of Planck's constant. And if you had done that, you got an answer that is 8.7 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So you can express your answer either in joules or in electron volts. To me, the electron volts is an easier route because you don't have to deal with a 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 for the charge of the electron. All right, lastly, we have number five, which asks us to calculate the energy and momentum of a photon. So they want the energy, E, and the momentum, P, of a photon of wavelength 700 nanometers, and of course, that's lambda. Okay, this is a fairly easy question to deal with. Uh, you start off with the energy, and that's HF, but as we mentioned back here in our analysis of number one, you can also use a shortcut instead of doing two steps to recognize it's also, also HC over lambda. So E equals this time we will use the joule second form. I would encourage you to do that whenever doing any kind of Compton or de Broglie wavelength calculation. 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds times 3 times 10 to the 8 for your speed of light divided by and our wavelength given as 700 times 10 to the negative 9 for nano. Multiplying and dividing here, we get for our energy 2.84 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. All right, so there's our answer for our energy. Okay, our momentum P equals H over lambda, that's the Compton uh, equation momentum there. Whenever we use this, we have to use the joule second form of Planck's constant. 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 
divided by the 700 times 10 to the negative 9 for the wavelength. And that gives us a momentum of 9.47 times 10 to the negative 28 units of momentum kilogram meters per second. And it's because of those units, kilogram meters per second, as to why we have to use the joule second form of Planck's constant. All right, much more practice to come in the questions we'll do in class, uh, but this will do it for numbers one, two, and five.